Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to at another interesting episode on your favorite Letters Law YouTube channel. So today in this video, we're going to see about another interesting topic and that is how to use web concurrent start and web concurrent end and that will help you to understand how to efficiently use or how to efficiently run a load test with concurrent execution. And in fact, um, this is one of uh, the questions that's been asked in one of uh, the uh, top uh, IT organization. So please do watch the entire video. You might get uh, this question in one of your interviews because like I told you, this has been asked in an interview and as you all know, uh, the same set of questions has been followed uh, on the same uh, role. Uh, so you might also get this question. So with no further delay, let's go to the video. And before we move on to this video, this is me, your son Shanmugam. I welcome you all to our little Sla YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And uh, give a thumbs up if you like this video and share the video with your friends. And um, give a shout out to your friends if they are not yet following our channel. And coming back to the web concurrent start and web concurrent end. So we'll see with an example. So before that, let me create a new script and solution. Let it be web HTML3, that's fine. And uh, click create. So now I'm going to create a new uh, HTML script and uh, inside the actions. Uh, so how does the web uh, concurrent start and web concurrent end ends so that's what we have to understand so to start a concurrent block so i'm starting a concurrent block and for that i'm going to use the web concurrent so when i just type um, these control space i get this web concurrent start using intelligence and inside this bracket i'm going to enter null because i'm not going to pass any value so i've got web concurrent start and then going to web underscore concurrent end so now i have got web concurrent end and i'm going to end the web concurrent end with again the same one that's going to be null so now i have got all these values so uh, inside this web concurrent start and the end what are we going to enter or what are all the values that we're going to enter because uh, as you all know uh, we can simulate loading images and CSS files in parallel along with one main catalog action or any any one uh, main request so long uh, with the request of the after the concurrent block so that is what we normally do so we, we uh, let me tell you in the very beginning so we will not be able to uh, do or we will not be able to send the main request along with the downloadable resources but still you can do that uh, for the uh, images and all the CSS files so let me start uh, adding the uh, images file so we all know uh, the command is a url and uh, this one i'm going to add the file which is some fish dot gif and that's the name of the file gif file and then the url oh, sorry uh, let me get the url here so this here is the url of the file and then we have got the resource equals one and then we have got the content type. So like I told you, we can pass the images and the CSS file. So I'm entering the content type and that's the image. And then I'm going to share the, add the referral part. And later I'm going to add the snapshot. So what is a snapshot that can be referred to? That is the tune.inf. And then finally the last. So with that, I end the sending of the very first URL. So for, let me first do it. So let me just... Uh, run it and before that uh, let me add the main action so this main action should come outside the concurrent start and concurrent end and that's it will be here so i'm going to send this request as part of the catalog action so let me do a quick run a quick validation and see how does it work and as you see uh, we have got i have successfully sent the request and let me just go back to the view to the layouts and then the replay layout yep and like you see uh, here we can see the maximum number of concurrent connections per server is six so any so like uh, even if i'm sending more than six what happens is 
that seventh request will be triggered as in the next side because like you see here uh, i'm sending the mac i'm, I'm setting the maximum uh, i mean the by default then load runner will actually send six concurrent connections per server that is six requests per server so now let's add the other requests right and they are here so let me uh, copy paste the values and i'll explain it to you real quick so now i have the other five records so which totally we have like six records for example let me just bring it down yeah and here if you see i've got the sm dogs or gif and then i have got reptiles dot gif and then cats and then birds and then uh one two three four five i believe i have another css file as well yep let me add the css file. so totally we have got six request six concurrent request and this is a css file request. so the other other ones are the uh, images and this is the, the css request so let's now execute it let's run it and as you all know we have got the uh, all these records inside the start and end web concurrent start and web concurrent end uh, let me quick quickly run it yep and it's done because since we have we are running it uh immediately through the uh concurrent ex uh, execution so i'm going to replay layout and as, as you all see here um so the value i mean the request that's been sent and we have got the uh so like you see uh the maximum number of concurrent connections per server is six and uh, the web concurrent start has started and the web concurrent start was successful so all these values has been started at the same time like they were the, all these values the url has been triggered at the same time and the resources is in the cache already and will, will not be downloaded again that's fine but we are able to send the request so they have found the resource for the values and then as you see here we have sent these values and then the value is found so we can see the found resource for all these uh, image files and for the um, the css files as well and then as you see here at the end we can see the web url catalog redaction was successful along with the amount of body byte that's been received and the header byte it's received so this is how you can send the uh the request using the web concurrent and web uh, concurrent start and web concurrent end so now you might ask me uh, what is the difference between running these requests as uh, web concurrent start and web concurrent end i mean like without uh, with and without using it so what I'm doing is I'm just uh, disabling the web concurrent start and web concurrent end and if let me run this test again so once I run this test I get these values here in the replay layout uh, you can see I've got these responses so I have created a, a comparison a quick comparison and here you can see um, the differences in the result so the same set I've just enabled the web content start and end in the left side and in the right side i have disabled them i just have I've not used the web concurrent start and the end and I, but i'm using everything the same thing the, all the images files are there all the css files and the main uh catalog redaction file was there but what is the difference what is the exact exact uh, the actual difference between these two so the request for each image on the left side if you see the sm uh, fish dot sm fish dot gif the sm docs or gif and anything like whatever the files and then the css files so all these uh files they were registered to be processed in parallel that's the reason you can see they are registering right so they are registering or successful registering or successful registering or successful because all these shows that they are registered for um to be processed in parallel so that is the first thing about registration but here on the right side you don't see them like you don't see them uh you don't see that they are registered for uh uh getting prop uh, processed parallelly so that is the difference that's the first difference in terms of using or even in terms of running this using web concurrent start and web concurrent end on the, on the other hand in terms of performance because since we are doing performance so we should understand so when by grouping these requests concurrently so load runner simulated a more realistic user experience where these resources load simultaneously and when when they load simultaneously what happens is they reduces the total load time and also they utilizes the maximum number of concurrent connections uh, current uh, sorry, concurrent connections per server so in this example we have six right so all these is utilized but on the other hand even though 
on the right side, even though you have maximum concurrent connections to V6, but they are not running in that way. They are like running one after the other and there is no concurrent connection. So if you want to use the maximum number of concurrent connections, like you see here, the maximum number of concurrent connections to V6, to best utilize it, you have to run them concurrently because if, if it is not, I mean, if you don't use the concurrent connection, I automatically it's not going to run in the concurrent manner. But since we have that option, we can use it. And then in terms of caching as well, so here you can, you can see all these values are cached uh, in the cache already and it will download again, but still, yeah. Uh, sequential, uh, sorry, uh, in terms of caching, so when this catalog.action, the, the website, the original main website is accessed, the previously loaded resources are in the cache and are not downloaded again, which is shown by, which is, is in uh, cached already and they'll not be downloaded again. Uh, so that is, that you can see. And uh, coming back to the sequence execution, that is without the concurrent block on the right side, you can see each web URL is uh, request is sent one after the other. That's that's the major major difference uh, when you're running it uh, with concurrent and without concurrent. So as you as I told you, they are running one after the other, and they're they, so when they are running one after the other, it's not a concurrent execution, right? And then uh, it has a longer uh, loading time as well. When you compare the bytes, the body bytes, the header bytes, you can see, and um, uh, uh, like you can well see the difference. Like that's what I'm showing you this uh, screen here. Uh, so the concurrent approach actually reduces the uh, sorry. Um, when I say uh, about a longer loading time, so each request is processed sequentially, like one after the other, and it takes more time to load all the resources. I mean, mainly the uh, you can see the maximum number of concurrent connections per server settings, which is not utilized to its full potential. And finally, caching, yes, it's very evident here. So like in the concurrent scenario, the same one which is on the left, the cache resources are reused during the catalog.action request, which ensures that there are no going, there are no redundant downloads that's going to happen. And uh, <clears throat> coming to the key insights. So the concurrent approach, uh, which we did on the left side, the, the very first one using web concurrent start and web concurrent end, null and null which will actually reduce the total execution time because it allows all the six requests to be processed simultaneously. And then uh, by using web concurrent start and web concurrent end, uh, we can align with that, we can align the test with the typical browser behavior because the browser can send six requests, right? six concurrent requests that can be emulated. Because uh, I mean like where we can uh, utilize the non-critical uh, resources, like we can send the images, we can send the CSS, we cannot send the main request, but we can use, we can utilize for the Images in the CSS files that are loaded in parallel, and also this actually this provides a more accurate simulation of user experience, and uh, we can reduce the server load impact because since these assets are loaded in a fewer uh, network requests, this reduces the server load and it, it actually minimizes the load uh, total load time. Uh, so uh, as we all know, it's advisable to use the web concurrent start and web concurrent end for loading static resources, and this actually improves the test accuracy and efficiency, particularly for, for web applications with uh, multiple assets to be parallel, uh, loaded in parallel. So overall, uh, if, you, if you ask me what is a web concurrent start and web concurrent uh, end, I'll tell you uh, that uh, the web concurrent start and end are used to simulate multiple web pages or multiple web requests, uh, sorry, it is multiple web requests which are sent concurrently. And that can be often for resources like images, for scripts, when I say scripts, it's JavaScripts, and for other assets like CSS that a browser would typically load in parallel. And this is particularly useful for mimicking the real world behavior of web applications where the browsers load multiple resources concurrently. So now I have a few questions uh, to be answered. These are some of the other questions as we asked. So coming back to those questions, um, like I have explained to you what is a uh, web concurrent start and end. So now you can ask a question like, can I use the web concurrent start and end with non-web request? Yes, we can use web concurrent start and web concurrent end with non-web uh, request in load runner because these functions are not limited to just web protocols, but we can use, uh, use, is, use it to execute multiple requests concurrently for various other protocols because they have uh, multi, uh, various protocols that supports a load runner. And uh, in terms of concurrent execution, yes, the function marks the beginning of beginning and end of a concurrent group. So all the resources within this group are executed concurrently, which simulates the parallel calls to servers. And uh, uh, coming back to the protocols, yes. So we can use these functions, the other protocols like SOAP, 
REST or custom protocols and this principle remains the same that is grouping requests for concurrent execution and uh, uh, can I use web concurrent start and end for web API calls yeah this is going to be your question I understand because as we most of us are using API calls for testing yes that that can be our next question yes we can use web concurrent start and web concurrent end with API calls as well in load runner because this allows you to execute multiple API requests concurrently and uh, why i mean like what are the key points of using these functions with api calls so the first thing is applicability so web concurrent start and web concurrent end can be used with various type of requests including the api calls uh, using protocols like http rest soap etc and you can place your api calls between web concurrent start and web concurrent end to execute them concurrently and uh, requests within the concurrent block are not executed immediately because as you have seen they are registered uh, for concurrent execution and then they get executed together when concurrent end is called so until the concurrent web concurrent end is called they won't be executed but when it is called all these values that are, all these requests that are uh, registered to the uh, system will be executed and when you're using concurrent groups uh, you can uh, i mean you can run the load test more realistic by simulating parallel api calls which is commonly in many applications and when it comes to the response times, so one of the major main metric of uh, performance testing. So you have to be aware that individual response times or requests within a concurrent block may not be accurately captured. The overall time for the concurrent block is typically what it is measured. And uh, can I use uh, concurrent start and end for uh, asynchronous API calls? Yes. We can use web concurrent start and web concurrent end with asynchronous API calls as well in load runner because this approach allows you to execute multiple asynchronous API requests concurrently, which can be beneficial for simulating realistic scenarios and for improving the test efficiency. Uh, so, uh, talking about uh, some of the key points, so you can do concurrent execution because the web concurrent start and end function marks the beginning and end of the concurrent group, and all the requests within this group are registered for concurrent execution so when i talk about asynchronous behavior so when you're using these functions with asynchronous api calls the requests are still executed concurrently but the script does not wait for each individual responses before moving to the next request and that's the behavior of the asynchronous call so with that i come to the end of this video and i believe this video will be very useful to you so until i meet you in our next video it's bye bye from us in Shenugam and your favorite little slaw youtube channel take care and bye bye